Hello, Andy Dwarf here, and today I'm going to be talking about bedtime routines. Why is a bedtime routine important? Well, number one, it's good for your health. It's good to have a circadian rhythm that's consistent so your body knows what to expect at what times of day, and it provides the things you need to fall asleep, to be awake, to be alert. Um, it's just good for your health in general, good for your heart, so to have routines. To eat at the same time, to eat square meals each day, to go to sleep at the same time, to get the amount of sleep that you need. Um, for some people that's six hours, for some people it's seven, for some people eight. In other words, routines are good for you, good for your health, good for your family's health, good for your kids' health. Um, and the other reason that a bedtime routine is so important is because it gets the kids ready to fall asleep when they need to fall asleep in order to have that nice healthy rhythm. If you don't have a routine um, and you just tell your child, oh, time to go to bed, then they're like, ah, the movie's just starting, ah, I don't want to go to bed now, and then it's like a big surprise and it's unpleasant. So if you have a, a standard bedtime routine, you go through certain activities, then they know that bedtime is coming up, that they are getting ready to sleep, and when they go to sleep, then they're more likely to fall asleep. So bedtime routine is very important. Um, and again, this is like one of the most important things for parents is, is getting your kids to sleep so that you can get enough sleep to be a good parent. And this is my bedtime routine, our family's bedtime routine. This is no joke. Our bedtime routine starts at 6 a.m., <laughs> okay? 6 a.m., because if you don't get up early and you don't get your family up early and you let your kids sleep in because it's easier and you're trying to get things done in the morning, it's a bad move because they will not be ready to go to sleep when you want them to go to sleep. They'll be jumping off the walls. So the bedtime routine starts at 6 a.m. We're all up by around 6 a.m. Nap time is the same deal. At From like 11 to noon is when my son's nap time, he's two, when his nap time needs to start. If I wait till two o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock in the afternoon, it's gonna mess up his, his sleeping time. And uh, so, the, the nap has to start at, a, at the same time every day, and that's about 11 to 12. Now, of course, if, if you're out and about, and sometimes you can't always do that, but ideally that's what you want to do. If, if you're not able to get them to sleep around that nap time, then just be prepared um, to exercise them more or do something in order to uh, get them to sleep at night. And also, the nap can only be two hours. That's kind of the arbitrary cutoff uh, line that we've made. If it's over two hours, then he has, a, again, he has difficulty falling asleep later. So two hours is the maximum. And, and I, you know, I don't wake him up abruptly. I just kind of, you know, talk to him nice and gently to wake him up at about two hours after he fell, falls asleep for his nap. Also, very important, exercise, getting them outside, playing with them, doing physically active things and getting them out of the house every day <clears throat> is also important. Otherwise, they feel uh, a little stir-crazy um, when you're trying to get them to go to bed. So about 6 p.m. is when we start having dinner. And I start thinking about, okay, what do I need to do to get the kids ready for bed by 8 p.m.? We remove braids and ponytails and barrettes because if you let your daughter go to sleep with that stuff, she'll wake up with crazy tangled knots. And uh, so I take all that stuff off. And then uh, between 6.30 and 7, we do our baths um, one at a time. They put their PJs on. We turn the TV off. 7 o'clock, after 7 o'clock, I try to get the TV to stay off. And then about 8 p.m. is when I'm really trying to get them ready to go to bed. One thing I need to do is check the temperature, the house temperature. If it's warm, if it's hot, people have a hard time falling asleep. It's better to have the house a little cool. So if it feels warm at all, I'm checking the temperature and making sure it's a little cool so that people feel comfortable under their covers. And then I make sure my kids have a, a drink if they need one, if they're thirsty. Um, before they brush their teeth. So are you thirsty? Go get a drink and uh, brush the teeth. My, my daughter, she's six, she flosses every night um, as recommended by her dentist. Change my son's diapers. Uh, again, he's two years old, so I don't want him to fall asleep and then have to change his diapers and wake him up while changing his diapers. So after his bath, when, he, when you were ready to get into the bed, that's 
pretty much the last thing I do is changes diapers. And then another thing, I guess it's not the last thing I do, I turn off all the lights in the house except for the lights in the bedroom where we're trying to get everyone to get into the same bed. <laughs> not my bed, my daughter's bed. I try to get my kids in there. Um, and one thing that helps is to turn all the lights off in the house except for the lights in the bedroom. And also any kind of distracting noises, like if one of the parents turns on the television to watch some, something, um, make sure that's you know, low enough volume so that we can uh, get to bed. Ideally, you don't want the TV on, but you know sometimes somebody's got to watch a show. <laughs> you just uh, just lower the volume. That's all. Uh, da da, distracting noises. Got that. If there's any white noises, that's fine. In, in, in fact, that's good. White noise kind of helps. Kids get in daughter's bed. Let me close the bedroom door, and then I turn on a lamp she has near her bed, and it's got an orange light bulb because the orange light helps you fall asleep. Turn the orange light bulb on and then I go back and I turn the ceiling, the white ceiling light off. That really gets them relaxed. One more detail I want to mention. My wife and I take turns um, with story time. So my wife will read them some Spanish books one night and then I'll read them The Warriors the next night. And it's funny, if we don't stick to that wife husband, wife, husband routine, and uh, one of us does two nights in a row, my daughter will be on us like a manager. She'll be like, you did two days in a row, so now you have to do two days in a row. And it's funny, she keeps us even Steven in, in terms of our story time schedule. Whenever I read them to sleep, I tend to read as they're falling asleep, and I never know exactly when they fall asleep. And plus, they don't remember everything I read. So I usually start off the reading by reviewing what we read the night before, and kind of bringing them up to speed in terms of the plot. And uh, I also like to do that because I really enjoy these books and I don't want to lose track of where I am in the story. <laughs> in fact, I want to mention this. This is one, one of many perks of being a parent is that your kids force you to do enjoyable things. Like if I was single and I didn't have kids, I would probably never have time to read fiction novels because if I'm if I was reading a fiction novel I'd probably feel like oh I should be doing something more productive or something more relevant to my career um, I should be you know improving my skills because those are kind of the practical things you know that your kind of concerns and your worries as a, as a single adult but when you have kids you have to read them to sleep. If you don't read them to sleep, they're going to have, I mean, my kids won't go to sleep unless my you know, mama or papa reads them to sleep. So you're forced to read these youth fiction novels. And believe it or not, even though I'm a 40-some-year-old man, uh, I really enjoy <laughs> these stories. Uh, we started off with uh, The Hobbit. My daughter wasn't too into that. I, I just didn't get a sense that she was really into it. I thought maybe I'll save that for when she's a little older. And uh, we read The Neverending Story, which she loved. We read The Princess Bride, which she loved. And I'll be doing a review probably of, of all these books that we really like. Um, and I'll do it with my daughter so you can get her feedback. Um, I picked those books because there's movies that go with them. You can read the book and then they can watch the movie. And it's kind of like this really exciting experience to see the story they, they, they've been listening to come alive on screen. And then my daughter really got into cats, as you may know from our videos. And so I went to the library and I, I, and I found this awesome series called Warriors about a clan, about, it's about a cat who leaves his uh, human home and he joins their clan of stray cats that live in the forest. And it's how they, oh, it's just amazing. So I, I'll get into it later in a review, but um, I, I got that series because she's crazy about cats. And if you want to encourage a love of reading in your children, you, you really have no choice but to seek out books on subjects that they are obsessed with. And that's cats for my daughter. So that's why we're reading that, that, that series. And I love it. I would never have read that series if I didn't have a daughter that was crazy about cats. I'm encouraging my daughter to read the Warriors books series on her own 
And when I when I encourage her to do that, I mean, I feel good because I'm encouraging her to expand her reading skills. But at the same time, uh, I don't want to miss what happens. I want to know what happens to uh, Fireheart, and I'm, I'm into this book series now. So uh, I, I'm going to, maybe I'll, I'll eavesdrop while she reads it. Once I'm reading for a while, first my son will fall asleep, and then my daughter will fall asleep. I'll ask my daughter, Sasha, are you sleeping? And if she doesn't answer and she doesn't move, and I hear her breathing kind of heavy, um, I know she's sleeping, and then I'll just kind of s relax for a little while longer so that the sleepiness takes hold. Because you don't want to get up out of bed and walk out and then and then wake up your kid in the process, and then later the kid comes out and you got to start the whole process all over again. So I just kind of chill, lying in bed for a while with my kids sleeping until I know they are in a deep sleep. And then I get up, and I carry my son to his room, and I put his little socks on to make sure he stays warm. And I leave both the bedroom doors open so that I can, as a parent, I always want to be able to hear what's going on in case anything uh, needs my attention. And, uh, and then it's the big challenge. The big challenge is making myself go to sleep instead of giving into the temptation of staying up and getting things done. And uh, that's really bad for me because the less sleep I get, the worse parent I am. So I really try to go to bed after my kids go to bed. Um, of course, that is the challenge for me. So that's it. Um, let me know what you think. Do you have a nighttime routine? What do you include in your routine? What would you recommend that I include in my routine? If you're not doing a, uh, a nighttime routine, I strongly recommend it. And if you do try it out, let me know how it goes. Um, hopefully it will help your kids get to bed when you'd like them to go to bed and uh, help them get in the mood for sleeping. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And if there's any topic you'd like me to discuss in particular, uh, let me know in the comments. And that's it for now. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.